Hey guys, thanks for joining us here on Dice Heist. Before we jump into the show, I'd like to give a little promotion for our Patreon. So first up, we have a Patreon that allows you, our fans, to support us and give us a chance to increase the amount of content and improve the content that we are giving you. So to start, we have four different tiers. The first is a $3 tier, second five, third, 10, and the final is a $25 tier. Now you can pick which one is best for you, and each one gives you more and more benefits. So at the $3 tier, you get access to our after show. At the $5 tier, you get access to our one-shot onslaughts, which are one-shot miniseries that we release every three months. We already have one up, and we should have another one at the beginning of October. Our $25 tier, you get a chance to sit down with me and create an NPC that will appear in Dice Heist. And they will play a pivotal role in the show at some point in time, I can promise you that. At the $25 tier, we have our merch. So every three months, you will get an exclusive merch item and be able to gain access to these exclusive merch items that have exclusive artwork and other things like that. So please check that out. Uh, On top of that, we also have two stretch goals currently planned. At the $200 uh, total, we would like to uh, start doing a giveaway to all $10 and up patrons every month. These giveaways could range from a lot of different things, from gift cards to even sitting in on our after show. And finally, our our $400 stretch goal, we would like to get all the equipment we need to record our episodes in video and give you guys access to that. This would be a Patreon exclusive thing and you would get an uncut video of the episodes. So if you guys can spare that little bit of extra money, we would really appreciate it. And it would mean absolutely everything to us for you guys to join us there. So if you'd like to help us out, we would really appreciate it. Thank you very much and bye for now. Welcome to Dice Heist, where we roll the dice and see what we can get away with. My name is Aaron. I'll be playing, well, normally I'm playing Bertram Dirgestride, our favorite bard, uh, but I may also be playing Tebow today. Over to you, Nick. Yeah, hey guys, I'm Nick. I'm playing Dirk Vilgoth, the arcane trickster, uh, and we're going to see what kind of fun shenanigans he's going to pull here, uh, continuing this combat. Over to you, Bronson. Hey everybody, Bronson here playing Adam Vadova, the rogue wizard of the group. Uh, I'm I'm scared. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're gonna play hide and don't don't die. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Oh, weird God. twist on hide and seek. <laughs> Uh, welcome back, guys. I am Raceland RDM, and today we are jumping back into episode 27 of Dice Heist. Uh, first off, we're on episode 27. Uh, this is it's this not is, a small number. It's not. I mean, I, I know it's a crazy no. number to just be like, oh, my God, we made it here. But like, I'm just thinking about this right now. And like 27, this is we're into it. I mean, we yeah, can't like we can't quit now. Like if we quit now, it's it's. <laughs> It's just straight up disappointment. Like for those that are listening, Everyone. you've literally spent like twenty seven hours, basically more than because every episode's yeah, more, more than an hour. Yeah. I mean, we're pushing an hour and a half almost every episode now. Yeah, over thirty hours. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. You guys are hours. you guys are the best fucking fans ever. Really, oh, man, more than a more than a day's worth. Yeah, we've made it to a full, more than a full day. Yeah, we're on heist. day two of Dice Heist. Yeah, we've only been playing for <laughs> we've, we've literally just been binging playing like back in 2017. I don't know why we make references to the pandemic. Sounds really bizarre. <laughs> yeah. and um, if, if you've made it to this episode, thank you so much for sticking with us and staying with our story. You yeah. guys are amazing. 
Yeah. So speaking of that story, uh, why don't we talk a little bit more about what's going on? So in last episode, episode 26, we got a little bit more into what's going on with Bertram specifically as this black orb. Uh, supposedly coming out of the Lava Flats, uh, had taken the lives of three members of the Order of the Dragon's Blood. And this fourth member who was able to retrieve it and bring it back, brings it back in this wood box. And you hear as the leader, Agreer, uh, voices his concern that it's not in a properly sealed box. Uh, you assume that it's sealed with some sort of magical uh, effect or maybe some specific material, um, but instantly it is known that it, it is not properly sealed and not properly protected against others. Um, so Agreer, in a desperate attempt to stop this uh, thing from getting out and this this dangerous magic that you've assumed it to be from getting out, he he tries to grab the chest and get it in a secure place, but for some reason, Koresha, this half orc woman. Uh, large, almost seven feet in height. She she rushes forward and and grabs his arm, concerned for his safety. And in that process, things begin to happen fast. And the box falls to the ground as this bowling ball like clang of the orb hitting the ground rolls about. And Agreer picks it up, completely being taken over and, and turned into this red draconic monstrous creature um koresha grabbing his arm trying to pull him away from the orb also does turn into this black draconic creature and as uh bertram our hero and his father and but his father's butler jump into action as the only ones who stick around to try and defeat these two dangerous combatants who now have uh these 13 creatures surrounding them uh, 13 stone statues. Uh, they they fight off these, taking out all but one of them. And Bertram, with a desperate last attack to try and fight back Agreer's mind from the hold of this orb, casts fast friends. He casts fast friends and gets into this almost wizard's duel over the consciousness of Agreer. Um, however, this freezes Koresha and the final stone creature. However, as said before, the stone creature is just deeply depressed and just doesn't want to fight anymore. Um, sad rocks. Sad rocks. Yep. <laughs> um, but we find ourselves as Bertram is being wailed upon again and is bleeding. His arm has this grotesque slash that is partially cauterized. Two slashes across his chest that rip into his beautiful gown. Uh, our beautiful uh, tunic that he wears and his vest, uh, his armor underneath is beginning to separate and there's just blood dripping down as it's partially cauterized, but he's just on his last legs, it seems like, with how much HP? <clears throat> Four HP. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> oh. DM secret here, I never ask how much HP they are have during the game and I never keep track of it because... I don't want to pull that punch. Uh, but yeah, he's got four left. I should have kept it a secret. I should have lied. I mean, I've 52 got... 52 <laughs> HP. I got two people right in front of me that I can't... I can't lie about the dice here. I have maximum health uh, of four. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're back into it. Uh, we have uh, Manfred, who is currently about 30 feet away from them. We have Brazoff, who's... We'll say 60 feet away because he's still uh, where you guys started at the farthest end of the room right now. However, his combatant... I thought, I thought last game, you, or last session, you said I was 40 feet away. You were, and then uh, you're 40 feet away from Manfred. However, okay. Bertram ran away, and that is where the other combatant is as well. So we'll say now 70. Uh, okay. Uh, so then next up in initiative order is back up at the depressed rocks turn and the depressed rock, <laughs> sad rocks the sad the sad rocks i'm sorry the sad <laughs> rocks uh he's he's just gonna like he kicks a rock that's definitely one of his friends and just like kind of saunters down the hallway just away from everything just contemplating his seven second existence um because it's only been like three <laughs> rounds of combat so he's, he's been alive for like 18 seconds right now and he's already just like hates existence the human wow. condition is setting in fast 
Um, the statue is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, we have Manfred. Uh, Manfred, you are roughly 30 feet away from this combatant who is currently wailing on your son and has got him on his knees and nearly dead. What are you going to do? Manfred's going to say, sorry, Agreer. And, okay. with a, and with a heavy heart, uh, with a fifth level spell slot, uh, he's going to try to witch bolts. Nice. A uh, fifth level witch bolt? Yes. And at the same time, Yikes. If, I, if I tune the spell, can I target the same dude? Yes, because that's so fucking badass right now. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna I, I want to him. He's going to You just like tune it. And... Both hands, your eyes start like jetting out this electric energy as you bring them both down and say, no, no, you <laughs> have lo- Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, imagine, <laughs> I imagine Manfred would basically, like, summon both energies in his hands, but then kind of channel them into his pistol. Nice. Okay, uh, yep, that's awesome. Because of the astral I sword. I fucking love it. And just, just brace himself for this witch bolt. Yes, yeah, so this massive witch bolt targets Manfred. Uh, you're gonna have to make two attack rolls, one for each of the yes bolts. You're right. Roll good. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, you know what? Me, Last Papa. round, I gave you advantage on your attacks against him, and I think the same is 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 going to happen here because he he's still- he's currently fighting two charmed effects right now, so he is a singular focus person. He cannot focus on you right now. So right. I'm going to give you advantage on this roll. Awesome, because you right. are flanking him essentially. Well, this will be right the now. first attack. That these two yep, days. that sounds good. <laughs> You're basically a wolf. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> electric wolf. <laughs> How will <woe. laughs> you have pack tactics? You have uh, familial tactics. <laughs> familial <laughs> tactics. Nice. Let me see here. So Paternal. you have. I'll be adding nine. So that's a twenty to hit on the nice, first one. Nice. That definitely hits. Get the fucked. second one. Oh, that's a little less. That's uh, seventeen to hit. Uh, seventeen will miss. Damn. Okay, so your one uh, witch bolt will hit. Nice. So that's gonna do as a fifth level spell slot. Fifth five d eight, right? Or five d twelve, right? Uh, yeah, five five d twelve. Okay, so Jesus roll that five d twelve, and you can maintain this spell, correct? Yeah, I can, mm-hmm. I can okay. maintain it. It's still going to do a it's D12 only gonna be every the... round. Okay, okay, so, so it's only a D12 every yeah, round. It's still... yeah, the initial mm-hmm. damage is like a lot. Okay, cool. So yeah, go ahead and blast him. Do this. It's not often I get to use my D12s. It's not often anyone gets to use D12s. Barbarian. Yeah, unless you're a barbarian. <laughs> Rolling for hit points or using a great axe. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anyone. Maybe some fighters out there. Great axes. I mean, yeah, I think yeah. so, but... but they should, and they should use great swords. Yeah, because it's the minimum of two. Yep. The only reason a barbarian should is because of uh, uh, brutal critical. All right. Nice. Mm. Or you right. great axe of sharpness. Uh, so the lowest die roll is a five. <laughs> that's badass. Oh. So that's going to be 22 plus another nine for 31 plus another eight is 39 plus five oh, because of the shit. elemental affinity. Uh, makes it. Can you do anything extra to pump us when you source pump a sorcery into it? What does that do again? You, you're, I remember you reading something. Let me see. So you said 39 plus 5, bring it to 44 points of damage currently. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's almost all of Bertram's health. <laughs> uh, you guys are 6th level, right? Yep. Okay. 52. Well, I, I know that because we've just been playing for 27 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> True. It was only hours ago you let us level up. Yeah. I, I can, yeah, you guys are a little loved. I can technically spend like a bonus action to get spell slots back. Um, I'm not. No, I'm not seeing anything. Else. Oh, the thing that gives you your plus five. What was that's, that? That's the elemental affinity for okay. lightning. Okay. I thought you could like spend a sorcery point to do something. Yeah, to, to gain resistance to that damage. Oh, uh, okay. Don't now. worry about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, you do forty-four points of damage to a clear, and this definitely it literally turns his crispy. Um, so. He, you see that his flesh on his face as he's just zapped with this. He his sword uh, flings back on the ground, just holding it in one hand now. As he just 
arched his back in pain. Um, he he takes a devastating blow and is just kind of like, as as you release this energy, almost there's just this uh, sizzling and. Um, my his, gun's probably like smoking. Yeah, your right gun now. is smoking. His skin is smoking, and you can see blotches of just like boils that are just poking out of these Ouch. red scales um, as his skin begins to separate from his body from this electrical damage. Uh, so, with this devastating attack, Manfred, is there anything you need to do with your turn still? You have your bonus action and movement left. Uh, you also did use just use a meta magic. So you do have the ability to teleport 30 feet. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I... Because of your... Yeah, the Astral Shard. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, So you can teleport... Yes. ...to be within melee yes, range of this. Yes, yes, So uh, Manfred, yeah, is going to teleport within melee range of Agreer. And... What can I do with my bonus action? Other than Healing Word, I think... Might yeah. Be it. Might be it. Yeah. I guess he's going to cast Healing Word again. Um, okay. What level are you casting that to? We're going to do probably fourth level. Let me see. So, to cast two leveled spells, we're not, you have we're to not use... worrying about it. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. That, there's that too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not. But so, I, I mean, at this point. Sure? So, here's just, my just... opinion I, I don't mind establishing that this is okay. Uh, just because, like, rules is written, like, it's it's kind of like a, a finicky sort of thing. So from here on out, in Dice Heist, this is an okay thing to do, to cast two level spells on the same turn. It's really a weird... To do so. Yeah, if you have yeah. the means to do so, whether with Quicken Spell or because you have a bonus action spell or whatever, it's really one of those things that really isn't, like, hugely downside. I mean, we give you guys fucking badass stats. <laughs> so you know what? Yeah. Let's badass this shit out, okay? We're giving you badass spell casting, okay? So yeah, you can cast this bonus action okay. spell after casting a spell with an action. All right, yeah, yeah. We're gonna establish that right now as a fact. I know it hasn't cool. come up really yet, but Dope. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see how much health I can get back. It's forty-four plus the. Uh... I'm actually not a fan because that means you can do that to us. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's yeah, how it's terrifying. That too. I, the other thing is though is a lot of monsters already allow you to do that though. The higher level monsters that do that, they give that ability anyways to do that. True. Oh yeah, because yeah, I mean, Brian has even like DM'd it to where he'll just give them a second action basically every yeah. round. Well, or they, I mean, or they, you need to do that. Too. I mean, a lot of them have like action, um, like legendary actions. They can cast fucking spells with that. So like, see that. yeah, there's already mechanics to fuck them up. So I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Oops. <laughs> uh, that is. 8, 9, 10, 11. And if I'm adding an extra 5, that's 16 points. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, Manfred, take a point of inspiration. Uh, you get a advantage on one die roll of your choice. Because you just literally... he Okay, so Bronson accidentally rolled 5d4 when he healed Bertram. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but just without even paying any attention, he just grabbed one d4 and threw it back in his box. It was a pl- it was a three. Like you didn't you didn't like just like yeah, meta game like, it here. You whoops, didn't grab that's that. An extra one. You know what? No, no. I'm, I'm gonna reward that. There you go. Take that. Nice. Take How that. much? I got a d6. You said? No, no, no. You get oh, uh, you get six. an extra. You, you get advantage on one roll of your choice. Advantage on. Got it. Uh, Sixteen for you. Whew. Health. Back up to twenty. Halfway back. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I just <laughs> negated a round of damage, I suppose. One, a, or well, one, one attack. Maybe. Yeah. One, one attack. One, one, one attack, attack, roughly. I mean, it's 4d6. <laughs> it could go bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Manfred, that's a good turn. Uh, Brazoff, let's see if you can do better. Currently, your combatant, uh, Koresha, who has been wailing on you, is standing there kind of like glazed over with her axe in one hand, just resting on the ground. Uh, you can tell that this combatant is not active right now. Um, if you mm. were going to make any attacks against her, she's effectively stunned. She's effectively stunned. Dope. So you you would have an advantage on all attacks, and I think a hit would be considered a crit. Uh, however... Okay. That's only if they're incapacitated or something. Oh, Normal no. Normal stun doesn't do that. Okay, okay. Normal so yeah, so you would do a, a hit. Uh, or you advantage would get advantage probably. on the attacks. Yeah. yeah. So you could start wailing on her, or... Uh, the other option is to move towards Manfred. Um, the sad stone is probably no concern of you right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was I was gonna say while while avoiding uh, <laughs> metagaming is 
Can uh, Brazov make an insight check on if he thinks uh, getting the orb in the bag away from Agrir would be helpful in this situation? Um, hmm. Make an intelligence Since check. Intelligence? Just a straight okay. intelligence check. Okay, well, that's just a straight roll then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 16. Okay, so with a 16, yeah, you think that would be definitely helpful. Uh, you think that its direct contact with Agrir is causing this based on your previous discussions about what these draconic orbs do, because you are semi-familiar with it as you've been a part of this organization for quite a few years. Right, and Brazov uh, would like to avoid actually killing other members of correct correct of this uh organization so uh brazov is going to uh since you said he's like 60 feet away Mm -hmm. something like that that's fine uh he's going to uh spend a key point uh for his bonus action for step of the wind to uh dash uh his normal movement is 40 (laughs) feet so he'll go right up to a greer and uh, the the bag that has the orb in it uh, is it like a satchel with a strap or something? I think it's a hit on his hip, right? Yeah, there's a small bag on his hip. Okay, uh, is there a way with his uh, basically uh, bladed dart tattoo thing uh, that he can slash at it and try to remove it and then go for a kick to try to kick it away? Okay. So go ahead. You you could do that. I'm going to let you make an attack roll oh, shit. against the bag. Okay. However, I'm going to ask that you roll one more intelligence check, please, before doing so. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, it can be Arcana if you are skilled in that. I don't think you are, though. No. Okay. 15. Okay. So with a 15, you're able to recognize the size of this bag does not match the size of the orb. It is right. essentially the size of a coin purse. So it's much smaller than the size of this orb. Based on that, you're able to deduce that this is probably some form of a bag of holding. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I will leave that up to you if you think that Brazov knows what will happen if he slashes this bag. Yeah. I know I know a lot of like listeners at home are like, no right now. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, just click See, for me. I'm like, oh so <laughs> so Bra- Brazov was wanting to try to go for the whatever the strap was holding the bag onto him okay. rather than the bag it's described itself. As being clasped onto his belt, I think. It, yes, it is. But I I mean that is an option. However, um what I'm going to say is if he would like to do this. Maybe you could declasp it. The a roll of between fifteen and twenty-two will strike the bag, cutting it. A twenty-three or higher will cut the strap because the strap is a very, very small leather cord. Okay. That you have, uh, you have if- access to that will separate it from this bag. What if he goes? Because you said it's attached to the belt. What mm-hmm. if he goes for the belt at a at another Ooh. spot that if he cuts through the belt, it'll fall to the ground? Uh, okay, so what we're going to do there is you will have, again, a 15 to hit. Uh, so if you hit a 15, you will succeed at cutting this belt. Okay, however, what's going to happen is, is that I'm going to roll a roll of chance to see if it okay. will fall from his belt. Okay. Okay, does that seem fair? Fair enough. Awesome. All right. So you're going to try and cut his belt as one of your attacks. Yep. Uh, that's a 19 on the die. Yep, definitely. Uh, with a plus nine. Okay. So I bet you're kicking yourself in the ass for not going for that cord because you would have <laughs> definitely succeeded right now with a 28. Nine. Wow. Yeah. How can you predict? Yeah. You really can't, but it's okay. Uh, so you do Could have just as easily rolled a nat one. I know. No, I know. I get it. So you you, come, uh, you slide up behind him uh, and to the opposite side of, uh, I'm sorry, not the opposite side, but slice down uh, maybe about a foot away from this orb. And I'm going to roll just a d20. On, we're going to say 50-50 shot here. 10 or lower, it f- it uh, stays on. 11 or higher, and it will fall. And that's a four. 
Uh, so his belt is falling <laughs> off, and it is still attached. However, it's kind of slack now, and I think with one more round of combat, it will fall off no matter what. Uh, okay. It is uh, easier can... to grab now if you'd like to try and yank it. So you can make another attack roll to try and grab the bag and just yank the belt and itself like completely free. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll, I'll go for that. Okay. Uh, I, I'll, yeah, I don't I don't want to make uh well. N- never mind. I'm am j- just gonna go for it. Just try to yank it off and toss it away without like actually like holding on to it. Okay. Yeah. If go that ahead. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is a fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, so with a fifteen, you are able to grab it and you yank it off. You currently are holding this bag of holding and his belt in your hand. Mm-hmm. And his pants fall off. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what happens right now. He has white boxes yeah, so, with red hearts. So, yes. yeah, Brazov, Brazov doesn't want to hold on to it. He's just going to try to, like, yank it and basically let go of it. He doesn't want to hold on to it because okay. he's seen what happens when you're in contact with this thing. Right. Okay. So here's what I'm going to say. You can get it about 10 feet away from him without using another attack. If you have, I, I know you can use your, uh, you've used your bonus action, so you don't have another yes. attack at all. So you, you can get it uh, five feet away from you and ten feet away from this guy. So okay. that's the best you can do as you don't have another attack to chuck it. You can basically just grab it and like release as you pull it away from him. And it just kind of falls right. away. If he's, if he's stunned, can he still opportunity attack? Uh, this guy is not stunned, no. He's on Agreer right now. Yeah, yeah thought, he's... Agreer yeah. No, Agreer is not stunned. Uh, Agreer is the I one see, attacking see. Bertram. Um, so. Huh. Okay. Uh, so that is Bradzoff's turn. Bertram, yep. you are up. Uh, it has been rested away. Now, Bertram. Did you... it go 10 feet away from me or 10 feet towards me? Like, or maybe past me. Five feet past me. Because it's a hallway, right? You know what? It went towards Brazov, who's behind him. Because Brazov just grabbed it, yanked, and pulled it back and let go. Okay. So it went behind Brazov. Sure. So that makes sense. Uh, so it's it's like, I mean, you could circle around him and it would be five feet away from him. But currently, it's like fifteen away from you. Manfred is right behind Aguirre. Yeah, there's there's man. So basically, the the organization is there's like this triangle triangular formation from mm-hmm. Bertram, Manfred, and Brazov all surrounding Aguirre. Aguirre's focus, however, is directed only on uh, Bertram, though. Right. So, um, right. and and the orb inside the bag has been chucked five feet behind Brazov just to give you guys, the listeners, a little bit of a better picture of what's going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is it worth doing this? <laughs> yes. I'm so conflicted. Just I don't do know it. if it is, though. Um, so, Bertram, just to give you another option here. So, you currently are concentrating on a fast friend yes. spell. So, uh, now, for this, like, contested yes. will of minds slash uh, Bertram distra- di- mental distraction tactics <laughs> uh, to to like fight this off what kind of like is is there any action economy involved um, yeah so here's what I'm going to say my turn end of my turn um, you it's going to take effect on a Greer's turn a Greer okay, is the one fuck. fighting both your spell and this this sure. orbs uh, effects on him however I will uh, allow you to take your action to focus on fighting this, uh, just actively pouring your magical essence into fighting him. Um, and what I'm going to do is that you can uh, burn a spell slot to give yourself a plus two per level of that spell slot. Okay. Um, <clears throat> to focus harder on this this mental combat. Uh, past uh, so Bertram has a red, gross, draconic-y Greer in front of him. Yeah. Uh, past that, he's going to catch his father's eye and uh, kind of indicate to the bag, and uh, Bertram's going to nod his head over his own shoulder towards where whatever the presumable exit is. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, use my last third level spell slot to try to help a Greer regain control of his mind. Okay. So on a Greer's turn, which is actually right after this, mm-hmm. you are going to get a plus 11 to your D your die roll. 
and the orb, uh, based on last time, is going to get a plus seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have a good chance of, of wresting the control of a Greer from this orb. Um, however, based on this interaction, you don't know how long that'll hold. Um, so here's what I'm going does, to does say. The, does the orb being further away have any impact? Uh, you don't know. This won't. You okay. won't know until it happens, cool. unfortunately. You're, you're just using your best cool. guesses of how magic has worked in the past to decide on how this works. And it could be completely different from what you know. Um, cool. So, so that's my action. Uh, and with your bonus, <laughs> I don't have a bonus a spell. Um, just really debating if I can handle an attack of opportunity or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, bah, 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 bah. He will take an op- attack of opportunity against you because the control was rested back towards yeah, the orb I, yeah last turn. Uh, so. And that's why I'm debating it. Mm-hmm. I assumed he was going to try, but... Um, that's my action, too. Damn. Damn, <laughs> damn, damn. So mm-hmm. I found me I was a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> All it takes Shit. is one level. <laughs> yeah, a whole last level. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, for what you're looking for, it's two levels to get yeah, that, that so. shit. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, person's gonna uh, stay here, and um, instead of instead of moving or doing any bonus actions, he's gonna say, um, "Don't touch it if you have to, but get this over my shoulder and out of here." Okay. Uh, so Bertram just focusing on trying to keep control over uh, a career fighting back against this orb's control and telling his father and Brazov to just get it over your shoulder. Get get this orb near you so you can do something with this. You mm-hmm. you have a plan. Um, next up is a career's turn. So we're going to do this fateful die roll again. Okay. So at the same time, mm-hmm. uh, Aaron and myself are going to roll a d20. So here goes... Nothing. One, two, three, roll. Oh my. Okay, so uh, uh, Bertram, you want to announce what you rolled? 24. You rolled a 24. 13 plus 11. Okay, uh, so Bertram, I want you to look down at this die and tell me what I got there. Uh, oh no. Uh, I lose. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled oh, a natural no. 19 plus 7 here. Oof. Uh, so... Uh, what happens is is a Greer, his eyes turn back to their bluish color. They're no longer glazed over with this black. And this draconic form looks at you. Bertram, you are the future. Don't, don't let us fall. And in this pained expression, he, he says this. And as he kills me, <laughs> he, he looks at you. His eyes turn back to black as if he's given up. A Greer seems gone in this moment. But the flash seems to be some sort of resolve brought back as his face and his eyes begin to turn back to the blue and and the the flesh colored still bubbling with the electric energy that that scarred him and he swings around turning away from you and just strikes down at anyone else and the Mm -hmm. first one that he turns to is manfred so Manfred, you are going to get two great sword attacks against you as Agreer is fighting back as hard as he can. And oh my god, you were going to hate this because I rolled a natural 15 and a natural 16, bringing yep. it up in the 20s. So you definitely got hit twice. Yep. Oof. Uh, so I'm just going to roll all of this damage together. However, okay. uh, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. These are two separate attacks. Okay. So... Um, I will explain after I roll. Okay. Uh, so these two purple die are eight points of fire damage. Okay. Uh, you are going to take a total of 
15 slashing damage. Uh, and then two separate sources of 1-8 and 1-7 fire damage. And I know you have the ability to use a sorcery point to have Resistance fire damage. Yeah. Um, and actually, yeah, if you can give yourself resistance for an entire turn, you would have uh, resistance against 15 points of damage if you chose to do that. That would all be fire? The yeah, all, the, the 15 is, it's 15 slashing and 15 fire. So 30 points total. He's just going to take it. Okay, so he takes 30 points of damage as uh, a Greer uh, turning away from Bertram just in this last act of defiance as this humanoid form begins to show back and turns back against um, Manfred. And this pained expression does not stop. He just knows that he can no longer swing upon Bertram, the possible future of the organization, and just turns away towards someone else. Damn. Big goof. Um, uh, as we see... So, sorry. W- so I, I I hate to be the ru- rules lawyer, but d- does that does that mean concentration check on the... Oh, yeah, yeah, the- for my witch bowling. That would be yep. a concentration It does. Spell. Yes, it mm-hmm. does. It does mean the concentration check. So, uh, so that's actually yeah, two, two separate. Um, I will say they're just 15 points each, so it's just okay. a, a DC 20. Or DC 10, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know why I said 20. Fuck. First one, uh, concentration, what am I adding to uh, Constitution. Constitution. Save. And check and see if he has... Constitution. Save. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's plus three. That's nine. That's fail. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, so the first the first attack, he drops the witch bolt. Yep. Um, this electric energy in your hands and in your eyes just kind of fades away as he slashes through you. This pain as someone you you know closely is is striking against you. Mm-hmm. Um, so Agreer, it his turn is over as he turns on you, and this pained battle continues. Uh, but we're going to leave our three heroes as Agrir is in his last leg here. And we're going to go back and see what's happening with Adam and Dirk. Isn't this some good quality music? This is Skirmish Epic, Deadly Contest, by Raphael Hofstetter, from BattleBards.com. That's where we get all our background music and sound effects for the show. What is BattleBards? BattleBards is the most premium audio library ever created for the tabletop gaming experience, along with tools built specifically to use the audio seamlessly in-game. Tailor-made background music inspired by fantasy races and locations, voiceover scripts written to bring life to everyday NPC interactions, and a colossal array of bone-crushing, spell-blasting sound effects. This is BattleBards. If you're looking to get the best value out of BattleBards.com, I would recommend giving BattleBards Prime subscription a try. With this monthly subscription, you can enjoy streaming access to all BattleBards content, access to all BattleBards tools, including their soundboard and mixer, the ability to upload and mix your own private audio library, and 20% off all purchases of sounds you wish to permanently add to your collection. I think this is enough for me. Go check it out for yourself and see what they have to offer. Now, let's get back to Dice So he, here's a secondary recap for everyone. <laughs> so for you listening at home, last time we caught Adam and Dirk, uh, they had gone with Tebow, our NPC played by Aaron, mm-hmm. 
Uh, and uh, they had gone after the kobold gangsters that had attacked Elmuk's friendly oozes. Um, in doing so, their quad motor got attacked by a cannon shot. And they rushed forward in an attempt to take them down, uh, sneaking into the building and successfully taking out uh, most, if not all, of the combatants. There is only one surviving who is currently in a crate and offering blowjobs to Dirk. Uh, (laughs) However, he did mention they were very toothy and probably not comfortable. Um, I love how that's what you put focus on. Oh, yeah, of course, because it's so (laughs) fucking hilarious. That was my favorite parts of that episode. Um, So, yeah, uh, you guys were interrupted in this fight by Naya, the person who had assisted Annalyn, the assassin on the airship from our arc titled The Assassin in the Airship. Who would have thunk it? Um, so yeah, that's that's what's going on for you guys right now. And Naya is accompanied by nine other individuals. Uh, Fucking ninjas. Yeah, there, there are ninjas involved, and I could be wrong on that total. Uh, so I'm just going to read off exactly who is involved in this combat. Uh, so currently, there I'm sorry, there was eight other individuals involved. Um, one of them just got snatched and eaten by a crocodile in the previous episode where we had mm-hmm. this combat in episode 25. So we have uh, two ninjas that have been doing flips and uh, definitely got shot in the ass by the archers a couple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, that had charged after Adam. And now they are currently standing on the uh, third floor of the building. Uh, down below, we have three rakish, or I'm sorry, yeah, uh, two rakish individuals uh, wielding uh, sabers and pistols as they rush towards uh, the combat, as well as three archers who stay near the door, kind of holding position and taking advantage of the more open environment that this building provides. Uh, lastly, of course, there is Naya, uh, who has stepped into the light and revealed her identity to you. Uh, you know that she is a powerful wizard who has the ability to cast spells like Melf's Minute Meteors, uh, Fireballs, and other things like that. So, here we find you guys in this difficult encounter as Adam just ran away from his current location using all movement he could to get away. Uh, We also find Dirk, who is currently secretly hiding. So no one is aware of where Dirk, Adam, or Tebow are, because Tebow actually will say is able to sneak behind some rubble as well. Uh, Initially, we're not going to jump directly into combat, as this is just more arbitrary, as everyone is just kind of sneaking around trying to figure out where everyone is. So where do we leave you guys? You guys are all separated right now Mm -hmm. by a lot of space. Uh, Specifically, Adam is on the opposite side of the building above the archers. Um, Dirk is maybe about 40, 50 feet away from Tebow as in his hiding spot now with a crate, um, with Zoldi, the leader of the kobold gang. Well, uh, Dirk, Dirk actually moved closer to the cannon after slamming him in the crate, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so so you move closer to the cannon. Uh, so the crate of Zoldi is just kind of sitting there away, not worried about that in combat right now. Um, so uh, I'm just going to ask all three of you, uh, just go around the table, what is your next action? Because you guys are going to be independently choosing this because you don't have the opportunity to communicate, except uh, Dirk, who has the ability to cast a message. So, you know, we're going to start with Dirk. Dirk, what are you going to do first? Okay. Uh, well, Dirk snuck over. Uh, he used the hide action last time. I don't remember if you recorded uh, that role. Uh, I did not, hide, but we'll say not. it was successful, just to make it easier. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it was like in the 20s. Um, Normally is. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> he has plus 10. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he, he moved uh, towards the cannon okay. and is peeking out that window um, through that smoke screen that is still active. He still has that going. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's trying to see if he can see anyone down in the streets that he could potentially shoot with the cannon. Okay. Uh, so you look down and, uh, below you do not see any vehicles, uh, off of this side of the building, uh, or any individuals that are surrounding it currently. Um, so the cannon is not positioned to take any action against anyone currently. 
Oh, okay. Well, that uh, I, I had a totally different uh, idea of what was going on uh, last time, so um, that that, uh, that takes a big poo-poo on my idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'll, I'll probably review that in the, the next uh, heist house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun to talk about. But, um, okay, I guess in that case, uh, he'll he'll grab the uh, immovable rod out of the cannon uh, clicking clicking the button and since he doesn't see anyone down there he's gonna sneak around till he can find uh, other combatants um, probably heading if if he heard uh, Naya's voice he's gonna head probably in that direction uh, being very uh, carefully sneaking throughout the area Okay, uh, go ahead and give me a stealth check, please. Okay. And we will determine based on that uh, how well you're sneaking around. Well, that was an 18 on the die. Okay, so really uh, well. Yeah, really well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We established that's a 28 now. All right, awesome. So, uh, yeah, you sneak around, and you're able to get in a decent position where you know you are hidden. Uh, there's shadows uh, shrouding you from uh, sight, and you also have this large block of rubble between you, but you are able to peek over and get a look at the other combatants. Uh, you have noticed that the two ninjas seem to also have disappeared into the shadows. Uh, the three archers have taken up a more defensive position, standing behind some rubble now. Uh, they effe- effectively have three quarters cover. And the other four, I'm sorry, yep, the other uh, three individuals that are left, Naya and these two rakish individuals are currently moving towards the opposite side where they saw you towards these ladders that lead up to the second and third floor. This is your kind of view of what's going on. Uh, Before you make any other decisions, though, we are going to move on to our next uh, player. So we have uh, Adam. What are you going to do here as you are moving to the opposite side of the building, kind of in this desperate attempt to... Uh. Adam's actually going to pull out his page okay. and write down the emergency symbol <laughs> to uh, our department, I guess, our HQ. Okay, yeah. And kind of give, like, if Adam doesn't know, like, the address of this building, he's going to give, like, basically a the, maybe the street name and, like, yeah. a brief description of the building. Uh, you, you can give the street name and just, like, our quad motor is fucking flipped over on in this road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you quickly scrawl this down. Uh, actually, uh, Adam, go ahead and give me an intelligence check. Or actually, you know, make it a dexterity check. I'm sorry. Dexterity? That I don't know, is that's the same, 13. But. 13. Okay, so with a 13, um, it, it, this is your entire turn to just kind of take care of this. Okay. Um, you, you aren't able to scribble it out as quickly. You actually have to stop a couple times because you write too fast and rewrite it because it, it's just not legible. Sure. Um, you're, you're panicking right now. Send fucking help. Yeah, like literally <laughs> yeah. You, you like scribble the help symbol and like try to give details to answer their question and it just, you're not getting it out as quickly as you want, but you sure. are able to by the end of this kind of encounter. Um, so Tebow, you're currently s- uh, huddled behind some rubble. I don't know how damaged Tebow is right now, but he doesn't seem like uh, yeah, he he's not he's not rearing to go, but he's also not like desperately in need of help. Uh, what is your next move? Uh, <clears throat> he doesn't know who these people are. No, you do not. Uh, he also doesn't know where the other two went. Correct. So uh, um, behind his, you know what? Sorry, just just uh, cut you off here. Um, you did see Dirk go towards the cannon because you were actually hiding very close to the cannon okay that's where you were positioned last so you did see dirk do that and you did see him like run off in a different direction so you know the general area where he is now Mm -hmm. so that that might be helpful i don't know yeah that changes things for you but tivo's gonna uh, try to at least be able to be in the area or see where where he went uh because he doesn't know who these people are but they seem uh, I don't know. Tebow knows their bad news. Or he suspects their bad news. Okay. Um, so he's going to try to sneak around um, and find the other two that he's here with. Okay. He doesn't know if they're going to fight or if they're leaving. He's definitely going to leave. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead and make a stealth check. Um, or actually, you know what? Make a perception check with advantage because you have a general idea of where uh, Dirk went. 
Uh, rolling badly, that is, uh, you said advantage? Mm-hmm. 14. Okay, so with a 14, you, you still know the general idea, but you're not sure exactly where it went. Go and roll a stealth check. That's much better. Uh, that is 25. Okay, so with the 25, you are able to sneak over to the general area where you think he went and get a better idea, and also just get a good look of what's going on, too. Um, so you definitely feel like you are not noticed in this in this situation, um, but you're able to see the same things that I described to Dirk earlier. Um, however, you do not see Dirk at all, or Adam in this situation. Um, so still, things are not really happening very much right now, uh, but you do hear Annalyn again, Come on, you fuckers. I know you want to kill me just as badly as I want to kill you. <laughs> Get your pussy asses out here now. Uh, <laughs> I will burn this building to the ground, and I will wait as your fried corpses try to scramble out before I burn you again. Face the music. Fight me like the men... You pretend to be. And with that, it's... Uh, Dirk, what are you doing here? Uh, just as a note, Tebow's going to use it. It's action or bonus action. I forget. doesn't matter. To reload his pistol. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. You can definitely do that. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Uh, Dirk, what are you doing here? Okay. So, Naya has several other... Uh, minions with her like sur- surrounding her or whatever mm-hmm. okay um and how far away is dirk from them uh dirk hmm they're gonna we're gonna say they're like at the center of the the building it's a large building uh that's kind of like crumbling we'll say 50 50 feet 50 feet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay uh yeah, he's going to continue to move uh, closer to them, mm-hmm. uh, trying to stay hidden. So I guess using his bonus action to hide. Nice. Uh, and then he's just like, uh, uh, I, I assume I'll have to roll my, uh, my stealth check before I do anything else, but He's just gonna fucking use his last uh, elemental capsule, and uh, this one's a uh, common lightning one. He's just gonna chuck it at him. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Um, is it within range? Because I know you don't have a bonus to your dex or your uh, strength. Uh, yeah, I was gonna move closer. Okay. Oh, you're gonna move closer. I see. Okay. So here's the yeah. only issue with you moving closer. So okay. the center of this building is kind of just dilapidated and. The levels that I've described, you're, I think, on the second level currently, based on what we've talked about. Um, they only exist on uh, the exterior of the building. So you have, like, this 20 to 30 feet uh, in towards the building where there are these levels defined. Um, but the center structure of the building is almost completely collapsed. And it's just okay. this large, like, open... Think of, like, a mall where you have the second and third floor of the mall that just have, like, these walkways and the other uh, the other areas there as well. So you're kind of, like, looking down into this open area that is just down below, and there's only the first floor in the central area. Um, you could try and get closer, but you would have to move down to the first floor to do so, is my only uh, qualm about that. So that's, that's up to you how you want to... Um, what I will say there is that you will have disadvantage on your stealth check to stay hidden because of that. Because you, you have to kind of move out into the open to easily move down a floor. Okay, I see. Uh, is there a way that I can uh, move down a floor without going out into the open? And, and, and kind of taking maybe an extra turn to get there? But Yes. Yeah, based, if okay. you take an extra turn, you can take some extra time to find a easier path down um, mm-hmm. rather than just kind of like move out into the open and jump down and try and hope that they didn't catch your quick movement through the air. Um, but instead, you can kind of like finagle your way till you find a dilapidated part of the floor that you can hop down through that might have some more cover. Okay. Well, in that case, I will I will take that extra round. Uh, I I will use my action to cast message to Adam. Okay. Uh, 
and I will tell him uh, when you hear the explosion, attack. Okay. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then uh, he will he will continue stealthing and moving down and closer as okay. best he can. Uh, so make a regular uh, stealth check, please. Does the message spell allow me to reply? Adam? Yes, it does. It does allow you yes. to make it quickly. Yeah, Adam would just say, "Okay." <laughs> so you know he is confirming reply. your your. <laughs> Uh, yep. Okay. So that was a seven on the die, so that's 17. Okay. Uh, Tebow, can you make another perception check with an advantage, please? Natural 20. Natural 20. Okay. So, Tebow, you see him move. Um, however, uh, out of the corner of the eye, you also see that one of these archers catches him as well. Uh, so, Dirk, what is your arm class? Never mind. Don't worry about it. Uh, I just rolled a natural 20. Oh. So this archer... Un- uncanny dodge. <laughs> <laughs> so this call, archer catches your eye with a natural 20 perception check and then rolls a natural 20 to uh, hit you uh, with a quick fired shot. Um, so you are going to take probably not a huge amount of damage. Uh, so with uncanny, uh, uncanny dodge, you only take six points of damage from this arrow, initially 13. Uh, but this strikes into you, and you are able to get ba- back behind cover. Um, yep. So you're assuming you're still semi-hidden, but you know that your position is semi-given away, um, and there will probably be movement towards you soon. Okay, so next up was Adam. Um, after this archer got a bead on Dirk. Adam's going to be listening for anyone perhaps approaching him. Um, if he does hear someone approaching him, he's going to try to hide from him. He's going to try to either hide on this same level. If he has to, he'll go up. Like if he finds a hole in the ceiling, for example, uh, he might move up. But he's going to... He's basically just going to wait until he hears... An explosion. Would I hear anyone coming towards my direction at all? Because that's another thing I was listening for. Uh, so no, you don't hear anyone coming towards you. Uh, cool. In fact, because you are currently like above the archers at the the front of the building, mm-hmm. um, you saw them kind of like lining up and getting a better position. Uh, they are currently like, I said they had three quarters cover. Mm-hmm. That's for Tebow and Dirk. Sure. For you though, they have no cover. And are not like you would probably have advantage on your first attack against them because they are completely unaware Dope. of your existence back here. Cool. Because um, you literally like were over here in front of them, and then did like some flash like bullshit to move <laughs> 160 feet in one turn yeah, to get behind like couple, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I moved around a bit. Yeah. So uh, cool. what we're gonna go with there is, um, so yeah, you you get a better look at them. Uh, you will have advantage on your first attack against them. Uh, you also see that the two rakish figures and also Naya move a little bit closer towards uh, where Dirk just got shot from. Because you, you definitely saw Dirk as well. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do here is uh, what do you have to do as well, Tebow? I'm going to give you one last kind of... Uh, turn to prepare and then I think we're actually going to go into initiative because some things are kind of playing out right now he's going to try if he can tell where uh, Dirk is headed mm-hmm. yeah. he's going to try to find pick his own way out there mm-hmm. um, if he if he has to he'll just go down out of like if it, his presumption I'll say is that Dirk is going to go down and out of mm-hmm. the building yeah. um, so if there's not an easy way for him to pick follow the same path he's gonna try to find maybe go out the window and then down the outside of the building okay so your last appearance of dirk when he snuck out of his hiding place to try and move closer he was only like five ten feet away from me. like he was really close but just the way he hid himself in the shadows um definitely provided him enough cover to not be seen by you like his his cloak kind of blended into the background um so he rushed out right in front of you uh, down into this hole that you see in the floor. Um, you could follow him through there, but after that, you kind of lost track of him. Um, and as he was falling, you did hear the twang of the arrow and um, a thump as it definitely hit flesh. Gotcha. Um... But I mean, if you're assuming that he's going down and out, I mean, jumping out of the window would be an even quicker route for you. 
So yeah, you might I even think say, that sure. maybe he, based on the fact that he just didn't take the quick route out of the window, knowing how dexterous he is, you saw him run up the building and take a backflip off of it at like 40, 50 oh, feet up right. and just mm-hmm. kind of feather fall down. He's not afraid of heights. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he didn't, the fact that he didn't just the jump out the window also. might be a little telling that maybe he's not trying to just get away. Um, I think Tebow's still going to get down via the outside instead. Uh, okay. So that whatever saw Dirk hopefully doesn't see him. Yeah, yeah, it definitely makes spot. sense. So um, he's going to try to sneak his way over to a window and climb down the outside. Okay, possibly. yeah, so you, you do that. Um, so you sneak over to a window and you are able to climb down if you wish. Go ahead and make an athletics check, please. Tebow is proficient, and that's still a good roll, too. Uh, his athletics modifier is zero. Okay. So 16. <laughs> so 16 is not bad. Uh, 16, you are definitely able to climb down the outside of the building. Okay. Cool. Uh, so that, I think, will be it for Tebow pre-combat. I think everyone needs to roll for initiative now. Um, and as you guys roll for initiative... I'll take down... Ooh, night. Oh! This is my first time I rolled it. <laughs> really good on initiative. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so everyone at home, uh, Adam finally rolled above a five for initiative. Uh, <laughs> I literally have been re listening to everything lately. Uh, Adam does not roll well for initiative. Like, I, I think... I don't think he's rolled in, two, in the double digits yet. And he just got a natural 20, so... Uh, the dice gods are smiling down upon him for the yes. short moments. <laughs> but I'm going to take note of everyone's initiative real quick. Uh, so let's start. Uh, what did you... You got a you got a 23, right? Uh, With your natural 20? 22. Okay, 22. Okay, so 22. And that's a 21. And that's 8. And no, nope. ready? Okay, twelve. Okay, uh, and then uh, for Dirk, what'd you get? Dirk got fifteen. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty. Okay. All right. So then, initially, we have first off. Oh, hang on. I got to roll for Naya. Not gonna matter. Okay. Uh, so first off, we have Adam. Adam goes first. Okay. All right. So initiative has been st- established. And first up in this initiative is going to be Adam. Uh, but before Adam acts, we're going to see what's going on with the other guys. <laughs> and I know as players, you guys are like, oh, my God, just, just let me finish this. Uh, but fuck that dramatic uh, effect. We're going <laughs> to jump back over to the other group. Sure. Um, as it was a Greer's turn. I just Sorry ended. for giving the listeners whiplash here. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Uh, I don't, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, cliffhangers are more fun. Um, so Agreer just finished his turn and instead uh, rested his ire upon Manfred. Okay, so we get back to the top where it is Sad Rock's turn. <laughs> yep, and still contemplating existence. Uh, so Manfred, what do you got for us? Uh, Manfred is going... God, I gotta remember. I had a fucking plan. <laughs> but I wasn't expecting to execute it this soon. That's uh, fine. Uh, yeah. Sad Rock's just gonna go off and start an emo band. I think I was going to... <laughs> Sad Rock's hard oh, yeah, yeah. rock. All right, I remember, I remember, I remember. Um, okay. As a... Bonus action and with two sorcery points... He's gonna cast um, shocking grasp, okay, by basically grabbing a Greer's head, okay, and just buzzing it, okay. After that, he is going to try to run over, knowing he could get smacked by a mm-hmm. Greer. He's gonna try to run over, pick up the small satchel, and chuck it. <clears throat> nope. And then he's going to use his action to cast invisibility on himself. Interesting. Okay. Oh, That's okay. interesting. All right. So Wait. go ahead. Be sure about the order of operations. 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, but he wants the orb to be invisible too. Exactly. Is his goal. That's, that's what I'm saying. Is like, if he picks it up first, then the orb, the oh. satchel will also be, or that, the bag will also. That's be what invisible. I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Because yeah. it's a held item. I see. Yeah. So. All right. So shocking grasp. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me get. It's a saving throw, I'm guessing, or attack roll. I don't know which which, uh, but... Melee spell attack. Okay, go ahead and make that attack roll. Ooh! <laughs> that's plus 9, 21 to hit. Nice, correct. Uh, that's 22, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> maybe, maybe Adam's really not bad at rolling. Maybe just Bronson's bad at math. <laughs> that is 6 plus... What? You should have two dice. He's in level nine. nine. Okay. So he should have two dice of damage. Yeah. Six plus another four, ten plus five, because it's lightning. Mm-hmm. Fifteen points of damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's not looking good right now. Good. Uh, and and then you rush away. Yes. Uh, provoking an opportunity attack as... Yeah. Ooh, ooh, okay. All right. So that's only a ten, so he misses you. You rush over and you grab this bag <laughs> off the ground and poof. Like a <laughs> hobbit with a ring, you can go invisible. <laughs> That's it from me. All right. Uh, so from there, we uh, move on to the next person initiative, which is Brazov. All right. Well, Brazov, seeing that uh, his, his his little trick with trying to remove the orb from him didn't have the expected result, and seeing that uh, Bertram is still probably in trouble, mm-hmm. uh, he's going to leap into action against a Greer. And just start wailing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nobody hurt... Oh, wait, hold on. That was that was a Dirk voice yeah. for a second. Hold on. A <laughs> <laughs> Nobody hurts a dirt stride and gets away with it. And uh, he he will... Uh, he whips some noodle arms. Yeah, he's he's gonna whip out his um, <laughs> his tattoo uh, scaly spiky thing and s- sling into him uh, with it, doing some flips and some kicks, and go for uh, two attacks for his uh, normal attack. Uh, yeah. So first, yeah, like first if he wasn't one. doing flips and stuff, he could probably get off like three more attacks. But like <laughs> <laughs> the the show of it definitely definitely makes it. Makes it worth it. So. Yeah. Uh, first one was uh, 18 plus uh, 9 to hit. A so lot. That is, yeah. Uh, 27. Good. <laughs> 27 uh, does good damage. Good to hit. Yeah. And he's going to spend a key point for stunning strike. Nice. Nice. Um, so, uh, till the end of the turn, if, uh, for Constitution saving throw DC 15 against that, and I'll roll the damage. For that you guys, attack as well. You guys want to know what the roll was? <laughs> There's a natural one. Nice. Uh, so right, go ahead and so roll that damage, and then something stunned. else is going to happen in the middle of this uh, round of yours. Nine plus. Uh, that is uh, 15 damage. Okay, so 15 damage. All right, so with 15 damage, you have effectively stunned him, and again, he he is just taking the hits hard. Um, but because of this, you force another roll um, for the orb because it feels the pang of this this stunning strike itself. Bertram, why don't you roll me another d20? You still have your Ooh. plus extra plus six from your spell slot you expended. Uh, so you have a total of plus 11, mm-hmm. and this orb has plus seven. Uh, both of us rolled natural 12s, which means that Bertram 23. rests control of a Greer in this moment as he is stunned. And um, Braza, I'm sorry, uh, Manfred, as you hold the bag that contains the orb, you feel a scream of just draconic power come from the orb as it is just in anger, uh, just angry at the loss of control of this individual. Uh, Koresha, across the room, drops to the floor, holding her head, just in pain as she feels the scream of psychic energy reaching out towards it. You personally do not feel this pain, but you hear it because you're in contact with it. Sure, sure. 
uh, a Greer, um, who had just spun around towards Manfred, uh, his eyes turning back to this blue and his, his face kind of in between this human and draconic, uh, form turns his head towards his attacker who had just hit a vital pressure point in him, uh, Brazov. And you hear a choked, thank, thank you. And from there, you see the blood vessels in his eyes begin to bulge in his head. And you see his head just this blood rushing to it as he begins to bleed from his eyes and his nose and his ears. And he falls to the ground, just dead before turning back into his human form blisters covering his face and hands and arms from the electrical energy that Manfred elicited upon him and just his his face scarred with bloodshot eyes and bruises from this psychic energy released from the orb in its anger effectively the combat is over but Damn. the orb's control is still in question right now. Uh, the three of you, what are you going to do outside of combat right now? I'm going to look at the space my father used to occupy. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't touch... Uh, you shouldn't touch that. Set it down, and I... Can have it carried, or if you have that ability, do that. And uh, uh, while I'm saying that, I'm fishing around for my page. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna bring it out and uh, write a message uh, to Mudbreaker or whoever is monitoring the emergency yeah. page service. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you write the emergency page symbol. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to write, we need. Uh, person was going to assume it's when he was talking about line he's, we need a lead line chest or we need a con- chest that can contain something um, permeable and an impermeable chest I don't, I don't know how you would phrase it yeah um, so, so you do that and uh, yeah he's just going to wait for the bag he's going to wait for the um, so almost instantaneously after you say that you get a response of where uh, and that's a hard question. Bertram feels kind of like this moment of terror as he reads that word of where, because he has no idea where he is. Um, but while while we contemplate that, we're going to move over to the other two. Uh, so Manfred and Brazov, both of you know that it is protocol to put these things in a lined uh, lead chest or a chest lined with lead. And you know that somewhere in this chamber there are these chests, but you're not sure where. Why wasn't it put into a lead-lined chest in the first place, then? It's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. That is uh, proper protocol. <laughs> <laughs> Which so, is why it was such a scam to begin with. Uh, so go ahead, and you guys, go ahead and roll intelligence checks each. Uh, I was going to say, immediately after Brazov uh, makes that stunning blow that mm-hmm. ends a Greer, mm-hmm. uh, he would he would be taking a survey of the room, see if there was any more combatants, and then ask, Sirs, are you both all right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So what did you get for your intelligence check? Eight. Eight. Okay. And, and uh, <laughs> set seven, Part 17 of for Brazov. <laughs> okay. No. So Brazov, uh, you fig- you, you've been like hitting the nail on the head with all of these like knowledge rolls here um yeah so even though he has plus zero like i've just been just, rolling great yeah <laughs> just just uh feeling them good rolls uh so uh brazov uh knowing that this orb was put into a bag of holding uh knowing that he uh, uh Greer was the leader of this uh organization in this area or at least this chapter of it you would assume that Probably there's, there might be these chests inside that bag of holding. 
Like that would not be a crazy thing to, to think of when you look around and there's none visible. If, if some are available, that could be where they were. Um, and, and you turn around and you, you say this to them asking, you know, if they're all right. Um, did you guys have a response for Brazov when he says this? Oh, Manfred would like appear just right next to <laughs> to Brazov and his <laughs> invisibility spell wears off. Bra- and, Brazov doesn't even flinch because he's kind of used to this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess Manfred would try to call out a lead lined chest. Okay. Yeah. So, bag. so yeah, um, you reach into the bag and think of a lead lined chest. And as you do so, you pull out a chest uh, that is similar size to the one that uh, was brought in. And you open it up and it is lined with lead. But before he opens it, uh, Birch would be like, How do you know it's empty? Uh, you thought of an empty chest. That's how you know. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask Rotten it's that day. No, a- no. As me. As a uh, I wasn't sure if that was like uh, table talk. You're not. No, that's, a, that's actually a really good question that Bronson did not think of. As, as a DM, I didn't think of it either, and I don't want to throw that wrench in right now. So we're so going to say I, you just asked for an empty chest and grabbed one out. Now, the- so I'm going I'm to assume that Agreer just had a, a moment of... Uh, <laughs> like Alzheimer's or something that he forgot that he had a lead line chest in his bag before reaching for this thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either way, he would have had to grab it first is yeah. the problem. And longer. he was hoping to not ever touch it. It's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not for the plot to move forward. No. <laughs> okay. Um, now the difficult part of calling the orb out of the bag. Correct. Does that require me sticking my hand in it? And Yes. Great. Father, great. just turn it inside out. So then every... everything is going to come out. That's fine, presumably. It's better than me having to kill you when you touch this thing. Um. So, Manfred... You are a just put the bag in the chest, man. Okay, so oh yeah, that's a good hang idea. on, hang on for a second. <laughs> Manfred, Manfred is a very confident individual. So if Manfred as as a choice can either feel as if he can he can rest control of this, he feels like he can. He thinks he can grab this orb and drop it in there um, without issue. But your son is trying to convince you that it's better to just drop the bag in there but you don't know what else is in this bag or dump it all on the floor. So Bertram, I'm going to ask that you make a perception or I'm sorry, not a perception, a persuasion check. Okay. And, uh, I'd like Manfred to do the same. Uh, we're going to do contesting pers- persuasion checks. Sounds great right now. I, uh, I feel like that that's the best way to handle this right now. The new flex of green in Bertram's eyes will flash as I'm going to use, Dial of the Dragon to give myself advantage on this perfect persuasion check. Yeah. Manfred's going to use his bardic inspiration to give himself advantage. Oh, <laughs> that, oh that, in, that inspiration you had from me, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Not bardic. That's oh. a lot better. That's a lot better. Then no, that, that's was, I rolled two and had twenty, but yeah, it's not. This at least is really fun. That's thirty. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled. A natural two and a five. Oh no! So with with advantage, oh my god! So uh, that five becomes sixteen. Uh, so Manfred's thirty. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, so Manfred, um, ignoring the advice of his son, reaches into the bag and calls forth this orb. Yeah. Manfred, make a charisma saving throw. Mm-hmm. And you probably are the best person here to make this, because I think you have a plus nine to that charisma saving throw. Probably. Because you're a level nine character with yeah. a plus five to your charisma. Yep. So, 21. Uh, okay, so again, Bronson. I know this is hard. <laughs> I don't know. 13 plus 9 is 22. God damn it, 22. What is okay, wrong Okay, okay. Quick, quick question. Let's just be that number. Hey, uh, public math is hard. <laughs> math you do in front of other people is two degrees harder. Okay, it's, it's so like I know this is a stretch, public. and this is going to totally be up to the DM. Oh. But can Brazov, when he sees him pull it out of the bag, 
can Brazov like make a, a, a kick attack to just kick the orb straight up into the air out of his hand? Um, hmm. Colt. We're gonna see here idiots. real quick. Yeah. Okay. Because all right. So first off, uh, Brazov, make a perception check before you do that. Because I will let you do this, but it could be bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is fucking... Manfred pulls it out, kicks it in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the thing. Touches the thing. Other guy touches the thing to prevent him from touch the thing. <laughs> well, no. I was, I was thinking of, like... So... Yeah, I, I know Manfred what you... Manfred pulls it out <laughs> in his hand so that it is... And you want to kick his hand. You know, yeah. Vertically kick the bottom of his hand, That's launching it still... upwards. What's, what's that perception check, first off? What? Perception? Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay, uh, 17. Okay, so with a 17, you are able to see, as Manfred is able to... Uh, as he grabs this orb, you see a slight struggle, but Manfred's eyes don't turn black. And he okay. is able to control this. The DC okay. for that was a 20. So yeah. you got lucky. Damn. <laughs> and you were able to just, with great effort still, smash this black orb into the box, lead lined, and close it, clasping it shut and latching it as well. Awesome. Uh, Brazov has this brief moment. You notice as you look up that Brazov has his foot raised, kind of in a poised position, ready to kick you, and just slowly puts it down, pretending that never <laughs> happens. <laughs> hey, um, new rule. Don't touch the orb of death, and don't touch someone that's touching the orb of death. <laughs> Evidence of 15 seconds ago. Agreed. And Manfred's going to grab the chest and put it inside of the bag of holding. Okay. So the bag of holding now contains the chest. And as a DM, I'm going to rest control back of Manfred and Brazov. Thank you guys very much, Adam and Nick, for playing these characters that you definitely did not create. And I full on <laughs> told you today you were going to play. So, yeah, thank right. you guys so much for playing them. You did an amazing job of portraying them and uh, using their abilities to the best of your ability. Um we are going to end here as the three of you take a moment to assess the situation and see uh, what is going on as you find that Agreer is definitely dead in front of you and Koresha is not moving across the room. Um, however, for some reason, the sad, sad rocks are just gone. He's, he's just gone. <laughs> uh, hopefully off to um, found a punk rock band. <laughs> 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 that leans a little bit towards uh, emo. Um, <laughs> Sad rock and the mellow tones. Yes. Uh, so we might see a reappearance of Sad Rocks in the future. Um, There's another one somewhere out there, right? That one at the hallway at the beginning. That was that was the only one. Oh yeah, there is. There's yeah, another one out there. Just saying, like, <laughs> hopefully they'll find each other and yes. be maybe they'll find less Sad Rock. Yeah, they'll 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 become sad. Uh, rocks that make love every now and then. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it just... Oh, man. <laughs> it just sounds like this. Leave it to DM Raceland to insert sexual stuff every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> As they get their rocks off. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you. That's, okay. All right, I'll probably cut that out, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> that'll be a blooper at the end. Um... <laughs> All right, yeah, guys. <laughs> We're going to leave you guys here with this uh, end of one conflict and cliffhanger for another. As we'll meet back up cool. in episode 28 of Dice Heist. Thank you guys so much for listening. And this has been a lot of fun. You guys have been with us through this all. Thank you so much. Uh, let's catch you next time. Bye. See you. Bye, guys. Later.
Thank you all for listening to this episode of Dice Heist. Our next episode will be released on Sunday, September 26th. I'd like to thank all the people that make this show possible, starting, of course, with Aaron for playing Bertrand, Bronson for playing Adam, and Nick for playing Dirk, and for letting us use his song, Something For Now, for our intro and outro. I'd also like to thank my wonderful wife for her loving support and for her wonderful work on our show notes. I'd also like to thank BattleBards.com for their help improving our show with their expansive library of music, such as background music and battle music. Always helpful, and I love to try and make it fit into every minute of the episode. Uh, check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash dice heist, where you can help support the show and gain access to bonus content like our after show and our one shot mini series. Speaking of which, we are actually recording today our Halloween themed mini series one shot, and we are going to be posting the first episode of that on October 3rd instead of a regularly scheduled episode. So please stay tuned for that, and if you guys would like to hear the rest of that, you guys can join Patreon at the $5 or up tiers and gain access to that the rest of that Halloween-themed one-shot. Uh, it should be super spooky, super scary, and it's DM'd by our very own Nick. Don't forget to check us out on Twitter at Dice underscore Heist and on Facebook at Dice Heist Podcast. Feel free to reach out to us there. Or send us an email at diceheistpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for the next episode of Dice Heist. Yeah. Um so what did you get past me? We we didn't pass it to you, Raceland. Uh over to you, Raceland. <laughs> I was gonna say, did anyone pass it around? Was, I'm like, I was like I was like I was waiting it, for someone it to was, pass it, it over, it, but it was, it was definitely Bronson's. I'm like fault. I'm trying to do my prep notes here. God damn it, Bronson. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. So uh yeah.